Hello everyone, it's Richard Lewis here again with another video. I know it's been a while, obviously been running an event, uh, so have got time to get back into that YouTube grind now. And there's a topic that's been going on in the background that I'm sure lots of you have heard things about, but actually maybe haven't been able to keep up with it in the news cycle and everything else that's going on. And this is about Twitch and the ongoing issues a lot of streamers are having in relation to DMCA uh, takedowns and copyright laws. Now, the first thing I want to do just at the offset of the video is just give you sort of a broad, uh, you know, description of what's going on with the DMCA, what DMCA is, because I think a lot of people are, are kind of a little bit intimidated by talking about it, when in reality, it's just doing that thing that l legal circles and academia do which is they use big scary words to explain pretty simple concepts everybody can grasp when uh, grasp when laid out in plain english so the dmca is the digital millennium copyright act uh it was passed in 1998 uh, and it brought together various uh, legislation for the world intellectual property organization and ultimately what it was about was if anybody w wanted to utilize copyrighted material for their own monetary gain or to distribute it or you know whatever without the right permissions uh this was now a way that rights holders could actually take legal recourse now this is a, a broader area called digital rights management i'm sure you've heard of that too and basically what it is is if you own something and somebody is distributing it, disseminating it, broadcasting it, you know, whatever it might be, uh, you as the rights holder need to have a legal avenue to say they can't do that. I own the rights to that. Now, what's not talked about quite so much is something called the Online, <laughs> Online Copyright Infringement Liability Limitation Act, which, yes, it's a mouthful. That's why I tripped over my words a little bit there. It's commonly known as a SILA or even more commonly known as the Safe Harbor Provision. And what this does it was passed at the same time as the dmca it said if you were an online service provider uh, which includes internet service providers as well as platforms you know think twitch for example uh what it, what they would be willing to do would be to forego if they were a rights holder that had been infringed upon they would forego the right to be directly sue you they would absolve you of liability if somebody was infringing on their rights provided you agreed to certain things and it, this is the obvious stuff you know you obviously have to act on a dmca request and specifically it says you will take it down without conducting your own investigation you will assume the request is being made in good faith that's why DMCAs are immediately thrust upon. It's to meet the safe harbor provision. Uh, on top of that, it also says if somebody does it repeatedly, you will take down their account. You will stop them doing it. You will ban them from your service. Now, there's nothing in the law that says it has to be three times. Uh, that just is an arbitrary number that people have arrived at. It could have just as easily been 10 or 20 or whatever. But they have to ban you if you constantly violate uh, online copyright infringement. And if they don't, they themselves could become liable. And, uh, you know, they could find themselves open to a lawsuit. Now, that's what it's all about, guys. This is basically something that's gone on. It doesn't help folk like us. It doesn't help content creators. It doesn't help small streamers. This was an agreement brought in by the government and corporations that are rights holders to basically forego suing other corporations when people on their platforms violate uh, copyright law. It benefits the big guys, doesn't really benefit the small guys. In fact, the way the DMCA works actually goes against other things in American law, like the um, you know fair use doctrine would be an immediate one, right, to think of. The Fair Use Doctrine says, if you're using a small snippet of a copyrighted work for the purposes of commentary or criticism, um, and there's other things, but basically you're allowed to do that. People who are critics and pundits get pulled all the time because of DMCAs. And remember, because of the agreement, because people don't want to get sued, fuck you, fuck your content, fuck your critique. We're pulling it down immediately and we're not investigating it. And we're just going to assume that the big bad corporation rights holders have the right to do it. When often, you know, they don't. You're, you're using it in fair use. This is why, you know, go talk to any movie review YouTuber about the nightmare they have. And that's on YouTube, a platform that actually... They handle DMCA better than most. 
So that's the whole issue in a, in a nutshell. That's why it all exists. Uh, and I think that's important to just lay that out at the start of any discussion because some people do get lost in it. As I said, some people feel intimidated talking about it. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully that kind of outlines why there's so much conflict around this issue in the first place. Probably needs to be looked at, something that needs to be resolved, you know, and now as certain platforms and everyone's a broadcaster, essentially, uh, it's become more ubiquitous, right? So anyway. Uh, what I also need to do is give you some background. How did we get into this situation where so many Twitch streamers have had to delete VODs, you know, tens of thousands of hours of content gone forever because Twitch has handled the implementation of the DMCA so badly. So back at the, uh, I think it was in June to begin with, um, yes, you can see here, this is a report in Verge. What started happening was, it was announced that Twitch was going to start scanning and deleting clips that contain copyrighted music without penalty, but also sort of without, you know, notification. It was just something they were going to go in and start doing. Um, and you can see they were going to work with Audible Magic, which is a company, uh, a sort of program made by the Audible company that identifies music kind of like a shazam if you've ever used that in a nightclub you know you don't know what a song is and basically dictates who has the rights who the claim has to come in for and it'll mute it so you're not in violation essentially of uh the dmca now when that happens uh obviously you don't get noticed uh, you don't get a notification and you don't get a notice on your account that it's been done they just go through and they do it. And I'm sure we've all seen that. If you're a Twitch streamer, you will see that sometimes if you play music in the background, it's just automatically muted. Now, I think this, to be honest, is a fair resolution for the whole problem. But this was actually done in anticipation of something else that we're going to get into. But for me, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm mega sympathetic to streamers. I said at the time, this has been a, a long time coming. I said this back in the summer. I said, guys, you've got to stop playing copyrighted music in the background. The argument that you're making that, oh, but we're exposing our fans to the music and oh but it's not a substitute for the music you are using that music in a commercial purpose to enhance your broadcast this isn't rocket science you were always going to get stung over this at some point and honestly twitch streamers have kind of been flying in the face of common sense and law for a long long time and have got away with it for a long long time and unfortunately while i agree twitch is handling this badly a little this is really chickens coming home to roost there's not really a lot you can say about that anyway Let's get rid of that. Let's jump ahead to Rolling Stone. Uh, and this was at the start of October. And what they started to do, Twitch, was they started to buckle up and get in uh, um, a, a new feature called Soundtrack that was going to essentially try and get some licenses so streamers could use some songs on their broadcast. But the problem with this is it was a, a sort of halfway house. It was the cheapest option available to Twitch to kind of get around all of this nonsense that was going on with the DMCA. So why is Soundtrack a halfway house? Well, let me just explain it to you. First of all, while it does come with a library uh, of musicians that you can sort of use, you can use them on your live stream. What Twitch hasn't done is acquired what's called a sync license. And a sync license is where you buy the rights to use the music in a video setting, and that can be an advertisement, a film, or a recorded live stream as and when it goes to VOD. So when it's backed up and it becomes an archived recording. Yes, the rights are different. And that's why Twitch were being heavily criticized at the start of October. Because while soundtrack sounded like a, a great step in the right direction, actually what Twitch were doing was they were sort of not acquiring the correct rights that they would need. They didn't want to pay for them. So you could have the music on your stream stored as VOD. So this represented another half measure. And actually, in reality, it's basically a workaround that doesn't pay the right people. It's it's so you can avoid getting into trouble in the short term on a live stream, but it doesn't do anything if you want to back up your VOD. So it was heavily criticized at the time as not being far enough to sort of protect their users, but this was a cheap option. So now we fast forward to the end of October, and what happened here was, uh, as you can see in Polygon, boom, the DMCA just, it landed en masse, and it was incredible. It went through Twitch like a bushfire and targeted all of the VODs, and it was all top streamers affected, 
It was so much material. It was it was almost backbreaking to Twitch to sort of deal with logistically because there'd been some new automated programs that were brought in by these rights holders that were like, look, one of the final frontiers we got to get locked down to protect our copyright is Twitch streaming. Look at all these VODs. Let's run our algorithmic uh, software and see who's been using music when and where. And literally, if you think about how on an average channel, if you get three DMCA strikes, you're banned. People were hit with hundreds, in some cases, thousands of DMCA claims, like immediately on their channel. So obviously everyone panicked, like, how's this happened? It must be a mistake. Some of these VODs were five, six years old that had just been saved using the highlights feature on Twitch. The letter that uh, they sent out was this. So it says, we are writing to inform you that your channel was subject to one or more of these DMCA takedown notifications and that the content identified has been deleted. You see what Twitch did in the first instance, because the problem was so insurmountable, they automatically deleted the offending material without even consulting with the content creators. Just gone. They just removed it because they, they felt compelled that they had to. They put in this flaky workaround. It didn't work. VODs were hit en masse, and they didn't know what to do. They were overwhelmed with the number of DMCA requests and basically panicked. Now, I'll just add, I talked to a copyright lawyer before recording this video, and they said that blanket banning that Twitch have done, I'll read you the rest of the letter, is actually on shaky ground legally uh, because it precludes the content creator from making a counterclaim or appeal, which is also your right under the DMCA. As I said, think of all the malicious DMCA claims that are used to sort of pester content creators or take down channels erroneously because of the safe harbor provisions that I told you about at the start of the video. So this is ridiculous and Twitch should never, in a million years, I, I don't think Twitch should have done this. I think it's a really bad idea Obviously, I don't know if anyone's going to lawyer up and sort of push this issue because you're talking about an Amazon-owned company. They tend to do well legally. It's almost as if they can afford the best legal minds in the world. But certainly, uh, banning your material when it might not even be in violation of the DMCA, you know, of, of the uh, DMCA, then, yeah, that's that's very bad indeed. But anyway... It says here, we recognize that by deleting this content, we are not giving you the option to file a counter notification or seek a retraction from the rights holder. In consideration of this, we have processed these notifications and is issuing you a one-time warning to give you the chance to learn about copyright law and tools available to manage the content on your channel. And then they basically outline you have until October 23rd to get your shit together. Now, this was issued on October 20th. It was three days. People had three days to basically go through years worth of content and try and pinpoint where they might have been in breach of the DMCA. It's not, a, it, it, with no tools, by the way. I mean, Twitch, it doesn't have great curation tools. One of the reasons many people prefer YouTube is because its curation is much better. It's very hard to search VODs. It doesn't even have a mass deletion tool. So people had to sort of use external programs to get rid of the VODs. And then uh, it turned out that wasn't even enough. We found out at the start of November that the people who were in compliance and deleted the VODs, this is Devin Nash, everyone's uh, favorite Twitch CEO, Turned out, because they had hard backups in some instances on Amazon-owned servers, the DMCA still went through even after that you had deleted your life's work, essentially. Devin put it here. Streams are still being DMCA'd for clips, VODs they deleted. Why? They're still on Twitch's server even if you deleted them. These are my deleted clips. Here's the ones they stored from 2016. We deleted our entire legacy and Twitch still didn't protect us. Um, then this is how they explained it a few days later. Uh, they basically said, listen, we were surprised by the number of music related DMCA takedowns as you were before May, we received fewer than 50 per year. Now we're receiving thousands each week. This led to the warning email some of you received in October. Three days was simply not enough time for most creators to sort through all their VODs and clips. Yeah, who knew? 
We should have developed more sophisticated and user-friendly tools long ago. To all the creators who lost their community's best moments, we're sorry. This shouldn't have happened. Our full blog post includes far more details, but there are two main things you can do to avoid music-related DMCA takedowns. Don't play recorded music during streams, duh, and delete VODs and clips that might have recorded music in them even if you're unsure about the rights. In addition to building and improving tools, we need to provide creators with more educational resources. On November 18th, we'll host the first of four copyright-focused creator camp live sessions, and you can follow them here. So Twitch sort of acknowledged that this was a big boo-boo. But again, remember, th this isn't about you. This isn't about you. This isn't about like the content creators. This isn't about the people that make Twitch the platform it is. It doesn't matter how much money you make for Twitch with, you know, 50% of your subs and running the ads that are now compulsory and everything. It doesn't matter. What they're terrified of is a big music company, like Universal or someone like that, coming in and basically suing them for what is years of negligence. They've let you essentially get away with playing music in the background yes you have to take some personal responsibility for it but they didn't have the tools to even stop it and now by the way they're implementing tools these music companies that are going to get you live if you do it. It, it this isn't going away anytime soon you really need to be smart and protect yourself by not playing the music but that, that's regardless. Twitch, at that point, had to give you time to back up your life's work, back up your content creation. Instead, they just nuked it from orbit because they were terrified of a mass lawsuit that was going to cost them tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars for copyright abuse because it was so egregiously over the line of what Safe Harbor pr provisions uh, were there for. So, you think that's the end of the story. It's not the end of the story because why the fuck would it be? So then it turns out, doesn't matter, guys. Doesn't matter if you're even in compliance and you don't play music. Now, this algorithmic software is so over the top, you can get done for music soundtracks. You can get done for in-game sound effects. This is a report in NME, the new Musical Express. And you can see, gusts of wind in World of Warcraft were triggering DM, well, triggering muting the stream because Twitch has gone so overboard to try and not get sued that even in-game sound effects now are in their database. Um, police sirens in Persona 5. Bird noises in Hitman Blood Money. People are having their VODs muted and losing content again because when you're a streamer, it turns out sound's pretty important. It's not just uh, the image uh, that matters. And this is all Twitch is doing. This isn't the big companies with the uh, DMCA stuff. This is Twitch's response to the DMCA stuff. They've panicked so hard that even sounds that belong in the game, which we, you have to ostensibly have the right to stream those on, on, on some level as an agreement there. So th those are now triggering people losing content as well because uh, Twitch have gone too much the other way. Now, what did Twitch do? To, to sort of help helpfully suggest the workaround for this. They took zero responsibility. They said, hey, thanks for reaching out. Uh, we recommend that you read through a game's EULA and utilizing any option to turn music off if the game includes that option or mute the game audio. So there you go, guys. Don't worry about it. If you end up getting uh, uh, losing an entire VOD's worth of content because you're playing World of Warcraft and Twitch's tools have gone so far the other fucking way that now it has to block wind noises, just play with sound off, guys. That's a great experience for your stream. That's a great experience for you. That was their helpful suggestion. So this triggered the first apology, <laughs> the first um you can see that here we're very sorry we made an upsetting situation even worse i mean it's not that it's upsetting it's just rank incompetence at this point what a ridiculous thing to say but answers to questions on such a complicated topic deserve more complete responses and we'll do that in our faq we're gathering all your questions and appreciate you continuing to reach out now if you want a sort of summary just overall as to how bad Twitch have handled this, there are other examples. It's not isn't just happening to Twitch, but other uh, communities have had the people that own those communities, which sure, they might not be as big as Twitch, kind of, you know, react and, and appropriately put tools in, in place to protect their users, which has to be the key thing here. Ultimately, I understand, and I'll say it one more time for the cheap seats, yes, 
you shouldn't be playing copyrighted material on your stream. But then again, if you do, there has to be tools in place to appropriately deal with it, remove it, maybe have that auto mute feature. It also can't be so overzealous that it removes valid content and also removes your right to appeal should a copyright claim be invalid. Twitch have done those things. That's unforgivable for a company of this size, a company owned by Amazon. But they just don't give a shit about anything except insulating themselves from responsibility. And I thought this was a, a great thread. Uh, if you don't know who Justin Wong is, Justin Wong is one of the guys that actually helped build up the esports um, side of Twitch. He's a great account to follow if you're interested in that kind of thing. Streaming law, you know, platform, the biz platform battles, the business side of things. He's a, he's a, he's a great guy. And a great follow on Twitter. But he said here, right? Twitch went from less than one DMCA notice per week to thousands in May. Then they sat on them for five months <laughs> before releasing them en masse. Then gave creators three days to scan, archive, and delete up to nine years of streams with no way to identify the infringing content. Then, after doing that, they waited three weeks to write a blog post explaining it. Um, Twitch has almost 150 openings on their jobs page, including six in Twitch music. And as far as I can tell, not a single one even mentions DMCA. We can only conclude they plan to handle this with existing resources. So just before we read these next two posts, this is awful because right now this is clearly an emerging area and Twitch clearly need to do better in it. They're hiring 150 people and not one of them seems to require any expertise in DMCA or copyright law at all. So as Justin rightly identifies, guess what that means, guys? It means this is it now. This is how it works. Suck it up, buttercup. So um, all the people who lost their content, fuck you. Uh, and let's just hope it doesn't happen again. Also, as well, that detail about them sitting on this for five months just shows how ill-equipped they were to deal with this and how poorly they handled the whole thing from start to finish. This could have been rolled out gradually. They could have addressed big creators first. They could have given everyone a heads up. Like, look, we're going to we're gonna hold off on these, but they're coming in the next five months. You really need to start going through your VODs. Just give us some time, you know? But absolutely, that wasn't the case. They didn't do it. Users be damned. Uh, for GlitchCon this Saturday, Justin continues, Twitch is putting on 40 hours of original programming featuring 140 creators and 18 official co-streamers. They built a site with a three-day Easter egg code hunt. Such a massive disparity in outward-facing communication compared to their DMCA response. I know for a fact DMCA is not an easy problem and there are many talented people who care, deep, uh, who care deeply working hard at Twitch behind the scenes. The severe lack of outward transparency and communication undermines their efforts as well as Twitch's own reputation within the community. And basically, that's what it boils down to. Twitch as a company uh, are one of just weird priorities. We've got scam sites uh, being linked to on the front page of Twitch every day. Fake streams that misrepresent figures on their platform. Twitch just ban these. I mean, it's like they're just playing whack-a-mole. They don't have a strategy. If they do, they're keeping it secret and haven't shown it to anyone. They haven't moved on things I've written about, like protecting children on the platform. Predators are still coming to Twitch to attempt to groom children. And... They haven't made any significant changes. Again, reactive, playing whack-a-mole. They don't have a strategy. And these are important things. And the idea that GlitchCon, oh, hey, we can't have TwitchCon, so let's have GlitchCon. Hey, let's all hang out online in what is essentially a glorified fucking Zoom call. The idea that that takes precedent, that that takes priority over, you know, some of your top names l losing nine years of content because you haven't given them the tools to go through search and, and, and curate and fix potentially infringing material you haven't even notified them of what the infringing material might be that's fucking unacceptable there's this weird duality with twitch where they sort of get away with being allowed to be the small company they were the startup oh look here we are in our purple hoodies and they're not that. They're an Amazon-owned, Amazon, one of the biggest corporations in the world. They're an Amazon-owned project. How Since they've been bought by Amazon for that unbelievable amount of money, 
what improvements have they realistically made you know we were going to be we were promised a big tech overhaul we were promised all sorts of stuff hasn't really manifested has it i mean we've had very slow incremental improvements quality of life improvements but problems like this now seem to crop up every you know month or so it's it's not good enough and twitch's management twitch's executives they have to be held accountable which is what they say you should do if you remember emmett Shear. we're going to get to him at the end of the video uh but they're not they're not being held accountable they're they're just offering mealy mouth apologies and not really outlining what their plan is in fact look this was emmett Shear's apology that he made and just look at his lifeless, dead eyes while he says this. Look at the sort of soulless corporate buzzwords tumbling out of his mouth and compare that to how Twitch has handled the whole thing. It's actually unreal. If you receive a DMCA takedown, you should be able to know exactly what the content is. Or if you believe you are authorized, you should know how to contest the takedown. And I think it's a failing of our email to creators on October 20th that we didn't include enough of this information. And it's an issue with our current systems that we're working to improve. Since May, we've seen and been required to process an unprecedented number of DMCA takedown notifications targeting clips and to a lesser extent, other video on demand content. This has also been a situation we haven't dealt with before where representatives of major record labels have suddenly taken an interest in enforcement action against content this community created years ago. We should have had better tools ready for you to manage your content. And we wish we did. We're sorry those tools weren't available when you needed them, and that so many creators had to delete their videos, capturing their community's best moments and accomplishments. So you, it's it's not good enough. I mean, I, I can't even explain to you. Like maybe some people don't understand this. It probably sounds like a really wanky, privileged kind of thing to say. But when you've produced a, a, a lifetime of work, now we all know some of it, content creators it is just throw away garbage you know they sit there they play a video game they eat their dinner they don't really say much but people tune in people want to see it for whatever reason and somebody like me you know i'd be i'd be so miserable if i'd lost all of my if my youtube if i woke up my youtube channel was deleted you know years and years of videos chronicling the history of esports and events and and, and giving my opinions about topical stuff and journalism all gone gone because they panicked in the face of potential legal action and instead of putting the brakes on it or using the five months they had to give you tools to fix it, it was just fuck you because that's easier. That's the easiest thing for them. It doesn't matter how much money you've made for them. It doesn't matter how long you've been on the platform. You know, it doesn't matter the fact that they're kind of complicit on some level because they never policed the people playing music on their stream when really they should. No, and uh, it, it's it's just unbelievable that once again, Twitch is dropping the ball for the people that sort of go the hardest to make Twitch a good place to be, a good platform that have given them this a functional monopoly from a, a market perspective. They just don't care enough. And that apology from Emmett Shear, this is, you know, this is the same guy who told you they were going to have better consistency in bans. This is the guy who told you, you know, to your face, if it was a genuine mistake and you violated Twitch rules, context would matter. Follow dozens and dozens of people being banned without context. We just had piece of sheet, an old school League of Legends streamer from back in the day who's had his name for eight fucking years, got banned on Twitch. Piece of sheet, sheet, S-H-E-E-T, because his username now, eight years later, suddenly violated the rules. Banned indefinitely, then reversed, barely an apology. Twitch is really bad now at dealing with its people and its and its streamers. And I think it's only going to get worse, guys, because I'm, I'm watching the movements. I'm watching people who were there since the start, people who I know do care and care about you and care about the streamers and care about Twitch being a good place, they're leaving. They're going to other tech companies with a great resume. Um, and so, guys, trust me, this DMCA thing was an absolute mess. And I think, unfortunately, it's only the tip of the iceberg. So if you're wondering what it was all about, now you know, that's essentially your primer. I hope that's explained it in, you know, basic down-to-earth terms. Uh, it's just a crazy time to be a to be a streamer and twitch continues to disappoint if you've been there a long time like i have anyway look i've rambled on too long about it that's all my socials you can follow me wherever you want uh, much love to you all and i'll see you on the next video